the madman. Have you caught Dota chess fever? Do you go into these public lobbies and you're like, oh man, I never win. Well, don't worry. Time for you to start winning. Dota chess has three main categories. Early game, mid game, late game. Uh, let me start with... Bounty Hunter? Surprise on all their heads. Early game, it's all about knowledge of individual strength of units and the knowledge that you want to pick the most individually strong units and early game unit synergies. The reason I picked Bounty Hunter is mostly because I'm hoping to pick up the other two goblin mechs and then capitalize on the goblin synergy. Super strong early, three goblins. Other good synergies include orcs early. Uh, Demon is a really strong individual unit. Uh, three warriors, two knights, and druids, because they're easy to tear up with. The priority in the early game is just field the strongest army you can every single turn. Uh, the strongest possible army is generally early game synergy of goblins slash mech, or just high star units, and demons, because demons are good individually. You died well. The orc bonus is especially good with the Beastmaster. Uh, and also Beastmaster is a good individual unit. What are good individual units, you might ask? Well, they're pretty much the early game synergy units I talked about. I'll pick up this mech also, in case we get another mech. Uh, so now I'm highly incentivized to pick up another orc to buff the HP. A lot of the early game though is just knowledge of what are the strongest individual units. And to that, a tier list might be a good idea. There's a few out there, uh, I'll try to link one in the info here. You never want to reroll early because the money is too precious. Uh, early game, you just never reroll. It's knowledge of what are the strongest units and being able to pick them out of this lineup every single time uh, to increase your chances of winning. So, we were hoping for the goblin synergy. In fact, we got the goblin synergy, but I think that we got even stronger synergy of these two level two orcs uh, fighting side by side. So this is like a good default team, uh, Clockwork, Tinker, Bounty Hunter, and usually do pretty well with that against players early, uh, but always be seeking to do even better than that. My opponent's got a pretty strong uh, four unit phase. Uh, another thing that's important is to level up ASAP. So if you have the money, that is to say, if it wasn't critical for you to spend the money on some units, you should press that buy chest XP button as early as possible. Sometimes around four, sometimes around five, sometimes if you get an insane draw, round six, then. I'm gonna buy chess. And I will get out... Hmm. Interestingly enough, I think I'm going to get rid of that demon for now. So we can have the three goblin synergy and the two orc synergy. Ooh. Spicy. And let me start allocating these items. We want... Um, we'll put... I'll we'll put some health regain over here. The Blightstone Cloak. Let's generally have this guy be the tank for now. Blightstone probably goes on Bounty Hunter. Early game, winning is really good since each win gives you plus one money, and if you win enough in a row, I'll pick up Abaddon, you can get a winning streak, which is a really big early game snowball effect. And I happen to have a pretty good early game team here. So we might get quite a decent number of wins.
Uh, now that I picked up two Chaos Knights, which are good demons, uh, good individual units... Well, let's actually completely switch up the team again. You two and Abaddon. So, early game, it's all about fielding the strongest army. And knowledge of what is the strongest army, that comes with experience, it comes with looking at tier ratings, uh, it comes with knowing that generally demons are great and you know, higher levels are better than lower levels. There happens to be one disconnect here, so we didn't get an opponent there. One decision that you can make early on is, do you want to level up twice very fast with your first 10 money? And if you're on a winning streak, that's highly recommended because you can keep on that winning streak money. And the interest isn't that high right now, it's only plus one per round. So I find myself on round seven if I have 10 money, and I won, then I want to buy chess XP and buy it twice. And if I find like nothing good here, it's like, yes, all the conditions are met for me to purchase here. Uh, and then I can field one unit. I'm going to field this axe. We have three orc synergy now. I mean, uh, it's still only two orc synergy, but this enables me to possibly plan ahead towards the four orc synergy bonus. I'm gonna trade out Tinker for Bounty Hunter. Or, if I don't have to trade, since I win one money, if I win, I will just pick up a Bounty uh, Hunter. Looks like with this particular opponent, he had a pretty strong lineup, so if I didn't buy the six chess piece, I might not have won. Which is going to let the winning streak carry on even more money. I can look at the win-lose here. I just fought against Mindful Master. I thought that was pretty close. Mindful Master lost to Snafu, so I'll want to look at Snafu's army. So attempting to pick that up. Let's see. Yeah, good individual unit. Should be picked up. And this guy wants to summon a bear. Uh, he has a long cooldown, so I want to put him near the middle, front and center, so he gets attacked and then he generates the mana faster. So again, early game, it's all about picking out the strongest individual unit. Synergy is not that important, unless it's like the specific early game synergy of mechs and goblins and or orcs. And then just try to keep fielding that strongest army. If you can get that huge win streak going, then great. If not, well, you're not expected to. It would be nice if we lived in that perfect world. Oh, bear. Oh. Going orcs naturally leans you toward picking warrior because two of the orcs are warriors. But at the same time, right now I have a Abaddon and a uh, Chaos Knight, so I'm leaning towards the knights. At the same time, here's a Lycan. Which is a good unit also. Uh, so, it's complicated. And while Lycan is good, I'm not sure if Lycan beats out this small synergy of Chaos Knight plus Abaddon. It probably doesn't. And I don't think it beats out this synergy of Orcs right now. So we're keeping our options open. Razor also a strong uh, option to individually put on the field. I also want to get up to 10 money right now, but 5, 6, 7. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to choose not to. Uh, always good to try to go up to developing interest. Uh, every 10 money gets you one interest. But sometimes the units you want to keep are just so good that you don't want to do that. Master of beasts. Uh, this turn, though, I'm definitely going to start collecting my first interest. Is this the strongest army I can field? Hmm, Chaos Knight is still strong. Beastmaster, no. I think it's close. I'm not entirely sure if Razor might be able to out DPS Chaos Knight or if a Lycan's uh, utility is better, but it's close. So let me get up to 10 money here. Let me sell off the early game goblin stuff. And we're gonna sell off Razor. Uh, 
That was close. As we enter the uh, round 10 forward, we're entering the early part of the mid game. Uh, where we want to start thinking about synergy over strength of units, but strength of units is still extremely important. So I'm still keeping this synergy of two knights in. I still have the two orc synergy. Uh, Got to start thinking about what my mid game synergy plan is. Is it going to be two? Is it going to be three warriors? Perhaps. Seems very reasonable, especially with axe as a warrior. Got the freebie win again. It's okay. This is trying to simulate a public lobby. You get the freebie wins in public library sometimes here and there. Uh, looking around can be helpful, especially as you develop your mid game. Uh, because you can see what's popular out there, and then you might want to avoid what's popular. Uh, it'll lean you towards one direction or another. You're still going what the game is going to sway you towards. But with an eye out for synergy now. So, let's see, we have... Holy crap, that's a lot of tinies. Uh, warriors and druids. Wait, that's also a lot of husk. Anyways, uh, warriors and druids. This is wow. What is this? I'm gonna call it variety pack. You got the free win. You're doing uh, mostly rolls and knights. Nothing I want to purchase. I don't want to go up to 20 money by selling this, or do I? Nah, this is a pretty useful warrior. I could be going warriors. This is a pretty useful warrior. I already have two warriors. I'd have to sell both. Wait, I am going to sell both. Ah, it's too late. That would have been a good... That, that's a pretty tough decision. Like, do you sell these two in order to gain that extra interest? And that's what you have to think about in the mid-range. Uh, mid part of the game. What's my planned setup? Since I have a lone druid, I want that beast synergy also, so no, I didn't want to get rid of Lycan now that I think about it. I'll probably throw the Lycan in here as soon as I get level 2 Lycan. Kinda wanna get this Luna also. This puts me at 18 money, which is a tough spot to be because it's like 2 money away from 20 money where I would get plus 2 interest. So here's where I will make a decision based on if I win or lose. If I lose this match, I'll sell the Luna. If I win the match, I can sell the axe, or the tusk, getting me plus one money, which will be enough. It's gonna be close. And I'll win, so I can sell this instead of Luna. Because Luna could conceivably be used. In this uh, mid game, uh, this is where the compounding interest and the winning streak bonus starts to scale up, and you get this small incremental advantage. And this incremental advantage carries into the late game. It's the ability to field these strong armies that can get you the winning streak and get you a pretty big advantage. I don't want any of those. Uh, I should put some of these blight stones out. Yeah. You'll notice that I didn't distribute my items for a while. It's because uh, you can get some specific units that you want to put the items on. I'm going to sell Axe, even though it looks like I have a... Yeah, I'm going to sell Axe just to get myself up to 30 money. Let's see, finish looking around at people's armies. This is a pretty similar setup to what I want of units in this stable. Congratulations, level 3 tiny. Wow. Who's this player? I should look out for him. Pinya. In the mid game, uh, around this period of time also, actually two rounds ago, you get the question of, do I spend my money to level up, or do I continue accumulating gold? The more you're on a winning streak, the more you want to level up. 
and I probably should have done so earlier. Uh, this level is going to be NPC. Every five rounds, it's an NPC round, so I'm going to hold the money since the level up wouldn't really help out much against uh, NPCs. I think I have them covered already. So, I think my plan is going to be three warriors, two knights, Two orcs, a uh, small beast energy here with Lycan. I'm going to collect this turn's interest, and then I'm going to level up twice. I try to keep the winning streak going. Oh, I forgot to pick up that guy. That's I can sell Luna for that, but... Nah, I'm going to keep Luna. Eh, I should have sold Luna. It would have given me plus one money. Pick up Medusa for late game compositions. Uh, AoE stun is just generally something good to look out for. And I'm going to level up twice. Yield my Lycan. Going to put these guys who want to ultimate more in the middle, where they are more likely to... Uh, ...get hit. And we're going to put our defensive items on the things with especially critical ultimates, like Kunkka and Lycan. Plus 50% for every attack. I'll put that on Kunkka also. Sometimes you can get two ultimates off. Every single time where you have the money, you have to ask yourself, can I build up to 40 money? And will that cost me too much? In this case, it'll cost me too much, but tempting. Look at that, plus 10. That's what I like to see. Bubbling! Juggernaut stands ready. Let's see, finishing looking at other people's armies, we have... Uh, we have a similar army to me here. This is Orcs. Four Orc with a Disruptor. I might not be going that hard on Orcs. Uh, this guy's going... Trolls? Strong late game army. Uh, hunters. A decent amount of knights, so that explains why I haven't seen that many knights. This guy's going warriors, so me doing the mix of warriors and knights might be decent. Finally facing off against Mr. Level 3 Tiny. Uh, can I take him on? Yes. Maybe. No. Yes. Ooh, it's close. Close one. Keeps up the winning streak. Collecting that fat stacks. So much money. So in public matches, because of the more lack of pressure from uh, people not necessarily being able to pressure you enough, they don't have the best idea of what units are strong early, they don't have the best idea of synergies early, you can get away with being a little bit more greedy. You can stack that 50 money, you can not reroll, you can spend the money on leveling up. Uh, around level 7, at the beginning of level 7, is generally the time to start thinking about rerolling. In the end part of this middle game, you have to ask yourself, am I under pressure? If you are under pressure, you need to reroll in order to strengthen yourself. Uh, and then possibly not collect your 50 money. By default, the best line is to just go up to 50 money, collect your 5 interest, it caps out at 50 money. Uh, you can only get 5 interest a turn, maximum. So, in the ideal world, you simply collect your winning streak, you collect your 5 interest each turn, you don't even reroll, and then just get so much money. Uh, perhaps not realistic if you're up against better players, but against public lounge? Sure, that could happen. Happens all the time, in fact, which is why when you're entering a public lobby and you're like around mid-bishop, you can win almost every single time if the opponents are all knights. Or under. I'm gonna be taking the maximum greed line of saving my money for upgrading level. Uh, but it is worth mentioning that the higher you are on the win streak, the better it is to roll because you should press the advantage. Uh, pressing the advantage, though, can also come in the form of just fielding an extra unit. Uh, so I guess this is my way of pressing an advantage. 
continue to press the advantage by collecting your five interest each turn. Collect your three extra winning streak bonus. It's big! I considered taking Omni, but decided to focus on the extra levels right now. Uh, fuel an extra unit, get that extra money, get this druid, combine my lone druids. Might keep Furion on the bench for a while in case I decide to go for another lone druid. Uh, times to reroll versus times to level up. If you think that you're- whoa, whoa! Uh, Oops, I actually have enough other unit. Oh well, won't matter. I should have put out Medusa. Oh, that's just NPCs. Uh, lucky break there. Times to level up versus times to reroll. So if you're on the verge of getting more power, that is to say something like you have level 1 units and they could be level 2 and you have a lot of level 1 units, that's a good time to reroll versus leveling up. But on the other hand, if you think your units are strong enough, and this is like a mid-late game decision now, well, middle game, really, then if you think your units are strong enough, you can just hold off, collect the interest. Uh, in both situations, I think you want to be a 50 money. My beauty. So I'm going to focus on re-rolling here because I'm at level 1 uh, Juggernaut and level 1 Lycan, and I can get a pretty big upgrade if I happen to get either one. Two units that are good. Beastmaster also. Hmm. Sell Luna. So that Luna that I've been thinking about selling a turn way earlier in the game, I could have gotten that plus one interest. Plus one money in the bank. Who knows, that compound interest might have gained more interest. We have like three morbid mass that I should distribute across units. It doesn't really matter much. It's not a very impactful item. Uh, but I generally want to put this on my carry. Okay, finally winning streak broken, uh, but we've collected so much interest. That's a level 3 ogre magic, very powerful. I'll sell this guy in case we want to stack all me nuts. Trying to match. Natural Warlord, is that good in my composition? Uh, hmm. Quite possibly. It's stronger than the Juggernaut, and I should have replaced it. We're not going for this Orc thing. Where are we? I'm still, I mean, the Orc thing is minor at this point, since, especially since we're not going for full Orc. So the plan is going to be to replace the Juggernaut with the Troll Warlord. If I can sell this Juggernaut also. It's generally good to get your re-rolling done at the beginning of the round because then you can get your interest, whereas if you dip below 50 money during the end of the round, or during the fighting, then you don't collect 5 interest. So this usually causes this phase to like have some sort of APM to it, and having good planning will let you know what exactly you're looking for. And also having some free space in your inventory really helps out this decision making as well. I don't know. If, I'm probably not going to use that unit, but who knows. Keeping it as a maybe I will use it, who knows. Can always sell it for full money after. Okay, who's my tank? Lycan, because I want him to survive and summon his stuff. Uh, Kunkka, we want to regenerate and possibly get a second ability off. And we'll put Morbid Mask on him because maybe he can regenerate enough to like go again. A Chaos Knight is a big unit, my demon. I'll put a Morbid Mask on him. And Beastmaster does a lot of damage, I guess we can put a mask on him. Good to distribute the units throughout, but I'm optimistic and I wanna like put the units uh, put the items on their best guy. Sometimes you can have a unit that's particularly good for carrying where you want to put all the items on. Now this Abaddon has stood the test of time as a level 1 still. Probably weaker than my Beastmaster, but 
Yeah, I should replace Abaddon with Beastmaster. I only have like two knights. Always continue to see what you can improve in your army. Uh, sometimes you'll have to break synergies, but sometimes units are so individually strong that you'll want to do that still in the late game. The late game is all about deciding what's my best end game army. What synergies do I want? What synergies can I do without in order to pick up these very good late game units like Medusa, like the level 5 units of all types? Um, like this one, for example. This one, I have no synergy. Well, actually, I do have synergy. <laughs> this last minute pickup. It's, uh, with the Abaddon, I can get the undead synergy. So, we want to slide this Lich in. Uh, who do I replace? can look at the DPS charts as a bit of a hint on who to replace. Uh, Troll Warlord for now, I suppose. I'm going to be focusing my money on leveling up now. I think my army situation is pretty decent. That was kind of a last second synergy notice. Uh, two undead, pretty decent synergy. I have both Abaddon and Lich. I don't know how long that synergy is going to last for since it's level 1 Abaddon, level 1 Lich, but we'll hold it for now. Uh, focus on leveling with all the money. I'll dip below 50 in order to get that level, since I'm putting up a pretty powerful unit. Another Beastmaster. Can sell my Templar Assassin potentially for more funds. I want to hold these two, I want to hold these two, I want to hold that. Let's take a look at our opponents. Level 3 Ogre Magi. Uh, we have... Roll set up here? No, just two trolls. It's Warriors and good stuff. This guy's got big warrior, this guy uh, hunters, and this guy troll army. Useful just to know what you're not going to get a tier 3 of. In this case, I think most of the warriors I'm not going to get tier 3 of. With this chaos knight, absolutely possible. Ah, good job, Lich. Another thing to watch out for positioning is if your opponent has assassins, you want to make sure to position some of the front line in the back. But in this case, uh, and that's done through viewing all of the opponents, we don't have any assassins on anybody's team, so we don't have to guard the back at all. So the back line is like really safe. The more units there are, the more uh, utility... What is this? Holy... Mjolnir. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Mjolnir? Where was I? As we enter the late game, uh, I mean, we've been solidly in the late game for a while, I'd say, uh, focus on getting those units that have AoEs, uh, Medusa, Kunkka, and pretty much all of the level 5 units. Finish out your synergies, start planning out. What is my dream team? Of course you want to have three star units, but past that, uh, what are the synergies? Uh, I've got two beasts here, so I pretty much never want to remove Lone Druid and Lycan. I've got two undead, I would like to keep Lich and uh, Abaddon, uh, but it's optional. I don't have to. Right now, I actually have a pretty flexible army, I would say. The synergies aren't very impressive. I don't really mind replacing a bunch of stuff with better stuff. It's way too greedy to go straight for level 10, generally. So I'm gonna reroll even though I feel like I'm in a good position to just go straight for level 10. That gets you your tide hunters and stuff. Full warlord Medusa. Tide hunter is like the cream of the crop in terms of end game units. Ooh, nice uh, lich finish there.
We want to field the Tidehunter, but who do we remove? And it's at this point where I'm like, okay, the synergy didn't matter much. Uh, we can remove... We can also remove a duplicate, which didn't have any synergy. I probably want to field this unit, but I'm out of time to think about which to replace. Uh, it should be Abaddon. Oh, he's like the knight and the uh, lich. But no, that doesn't matter. It's very minor synergy in both. This is just too individually strong a unit. Oh, I also have like two Medusas sitting around. Hmm, failure to PVE, but at least we killed two of them. That was a surprise losing to that one. Oh man, we're really close on Beastmaster. Uh, you have to figure out what's realistic and what's not in the late game to get. Master of beasts. Very unrealistic from- oh, let me- Who do I replace the troll with? Ah, this Abaddon. I keep forgetting to. Oh, and we have a demon edge we should assign to somebody. Um, let's put it on- who's my DPS carry right now? And I should cloak uh, Tidehunter also to make him take less damage. Plus 30 attack damage. Can I actually consider the Lich to build up the um, to build up the ultimate faster. Beastmaster does just also do a lot of damage though. Oh, I also have a troll. Of course, you put all the carry items on the troll. Uh, finally, get rid of this level three Abaddon. Should have done that a while ago. Lone Druid is good, but I don't have the room for it right now, and I've been talking so much that I haven't re-rolled in order to get the Beastmasters. It's important to keep up your re-rolling in order to... Uh, it's important to think of your plan so that at the beginning of the round, you can immediately just start the re-rolling fiesta. Because who knows, you might actually get a level 3 Beastmaster out of it. Or in this case, a Dragon Knight, or an Abaddon. In this case, though, any leftover money I can do, uh, I can just go ahead and spend on level 10 and I can say it was planned. But when I'm this close enough to that serious a power bump, I should definitely just go for that level 3 Beastmaster. Uh, holding down Alt allows you to see how much experience you're at. So when you're at a multiple of 4, really good to just finish it off. Very efficient. And I can build another unit. I'm gonna start just re-rolling, uh, go down below interest. Wow, Tidehunter, um, you should have a plan on what to remove. It's gonna be these Abaddons. The hunter feasts. Dragon Knight, Medusa, okay. Oh my god, Beastmaster, lock that in. So we've got our endgame army. Pretty much planned here. Minimal synergy team here, but just strong independent units. You don't always have to get like six warriors or six knights or four trolls or six goblins or anything crazy like that. Building tall uh, is just a solid way of going. Look on this tide hunter. One of the Chaos Knights. This guy. Girl. At the end of the game, you still have to make a decision. How long is this game going to go on? Should I hold the money for the interest? Uh, more of a decision to make, usually between level 9 and 10. Usually when you're 10, you're just like, okay, let me just spend all my money and reroll. And you can do that during the opponent's battle phase. For those of us who don't have enough APM to get everything done during the, you know, 30 second countdown. 
careful not to re-roll, because you could uh, lose it at the end since you automatically re-roll. So, gotta watch out. Wait a second, don't re-roll at the end. I'll push the Medusa closer towards the middle. Because she wants to activate her ability. Uh, we have a lot of people who want to activate their ability fast. Eh, one more. That way. This is a complicated setup. I want two more Chaos Knights, I want one more Tidehunter, I want four more Medusas. This Lycan is extremely unlikely. Okay, so we can just sell it. But might as well hold on to it for now. Hyperstone. We'll stack that on Soul Warlord. Uh, stacking items on the specific units which have like plus attack speed, plus bonus damage, splash damage. Those are the things that you want to stack all your items on. I managed to get one of the Dryads. I can actually combine my units. That would be something. Chantress. I can. No, we're not doing that. I saw who do I saw Medusa. Whoops. Hmm. That's actually surprisingly not that bad. Yeah, Lich is actually one of my weaker guys. Good job, game. Good idea. So we are really looking for a Chaos Knight, we're looking for a Tidehunter, we're looking for an Enchantress so that it combine the two Lone Druids into each other. Or two Lone Druids, that can work too. Oh my god, Chaos Knight. I'll punish. And this is why it's useful to have some inventory space open so you can leisurely reroll here. Oh, 100. But I save 8 money if I just get an enchantress. So, end game, of course, just all about building what is your ultimate army, dream team, and then going for it, and then just building tall other than that. The end game is just finishing everything you planned in the mid game. And being realistic on what you can actually achieve. No oh, enchantress. Wait, what the? Ah, oh, crap. We need to put all three of these units out and then combine these two. Wow, I have like seven lone druids, that's ridiculous. I'd like to claim that, you know, my instruction is taking up a lot of my EPM right now. But there you have it! That's how you can crush any public lobby. You saw some of the inefficiencies by me even, that's why I'm only a bishop 5, that's why I'm not a rook, but you can see how like if you want to explain everything in the teaching style you actually run out of time because throughout the game you have to think about what's my next move, what's my dream army, what's my army composition, what am I searching for and all that, and I couldn't do that while like teaching.